We're Tanya and Adam. Usually we live in this old rusty van called Jitters in Europe. And don't get us wrong, we love her. But for the last four weeks, we've been traveling Costa Rica in these two vans hired from Nomad America. If you've watched our Costa Rica series, you will know that these vans enabled us to see so much of the country and gave us a really unique experience. In this film, we're going to show you around the vans and give you an idea on what it's like temporarily living in these 4x4 beasts. The first of our two vans was this converted Kia Bongo 4x4 truck. We chose this because we were traveling with friends and it has two bedrooms, with the option to extend it to three. So we're now we're going to show you one of the sleeping options, which is a rooftop tent. Option one is a rooftop tent. With this van, it's possible to fit two rooftop tents and you could actually sleep six people in total. Welcome! This is it, the master bedroom on top of the truck and I absolutely love it here because it is so comfortable and it has definitely got the best views. One of the things that I really like about being up here in this rooftop tent is it's actually really spacious. It's a lot more spacious than you might think from looking at it from the outside. And you're high up so you feel nice and safe from all the bugs and you get a really nice view uh, in the morning and it's just breeze. nice. And a through breeze, yeah. of course, because you've got these two windows open and the window at the front. You can have the back one open as well, but we don't for privacy. So the disadvantage is probably one of the advantages, which is that you can hear everything. So it's absolutely brilliant if you are in a park up like this one right next to the sea and you can hear the waves crashing. Yeah. But we have stayed next to people that have liked to party to two o'clock in the morning and you can hear them very clearly. It's so comfy. It's really spacious. I am like for me, I can fit, like literally, I stretch out from my toes to my fingers and that's how much room there is. And, and Tanya's like five foot nine, five no, foot eight? No, I'm five foot eight. Five foot eight. Yeah. So there you go, and it's perfect for me and Eric, who's, um, I'm not sure, like six foot two, six foot three, he can, he's very comfortable up here. So there's loads and loads of space. So that is not a concern, which is great. And this is the downstairs bedroom. It's very basic, effectively it's just a box, but it has everything you need to just sleep. And to store your luggage. And to store bits and pieces, yeah, that's the thing. We switch between storing our luggage here and storing our luggage in the cabin of the car, which is in the front there. Although very minimal, this space feels much more private. So what I absolutely love about this space is that it feels a lot more homey, a lot more like what we're used to, like a bedroom and just like a little safe space. Yeah, it's kind of similar to Jits. Obviously it's more basic, but because you're in a van, it feels more like safe, like Tanya said. Yeah, and also there's inbuilt storage, just a little bit, but enough for you to organize your chaos and have a designated place for kind of like the things that you need. In and out. There's also a little electronics section, so that's got our 12 volt where we can charge and there's a little nook where you can put all your batteries and things whilst they're charging, which is great. And the fan, there's a little extractor fan that can either suck the air out or blow air in, which is great and uh, that has been a bit of a lifesaver because it does get very hot in here during the day. It's just a tin box in the sun. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, having that on at night is like an absolute game changer. Oh, and I also want to add that it's a lot more soundproof than being upstairs yeah. in the tent. And it's, it's still just like being in a, in a van. It's not hugely soundproof, but much more so. Yeah. yeah, you definitely get a better night's sleep if noise is an issue. Everything else you could need is kept in the back of the van. This is the utilities area. This is where all the, the fridge is stored, the table is stored. So let's show you what we've got. So this is the cool box. This isn't actually a fridge. It's not electric. It doesn't run on 12 volt or anything like that. It is just a cool box. But they told us that it's a very good top of the range cool box um, and it should last about two days. So we've just put a load of ice in there. It's not the same as having an electric fridge because we do need to maintain it and keep an eye on it, but still good. So this is the bad thing about this van is that the fridge isn't actually a fridge, it's just a cool box. So as soon as the ice melts, it becomes a warm box where all your food is. So this is like the fifth or sixth thing that we've wasted. We've wasted loads of berries, a couple of other avocados. 
plants and loads of vegetables. So it's, yeah, it's not good because things go off really quickly. And because it's not an electric fridge, it's just not a fridge. It's, it, it just doesn't last. We've got the chairs here. We've got a table. This is where we keep our dry food that doesn't matter so much if it gets warm. Still unsure about what to do with the pineapple. <laughs> is it, should a pineapple be in the fridge or should a pineapple be kept warm? I don't know, but we don't have any room in the cool box. We've had a bad experience with keeping it in the fridge and we've had a bad experience with, with keeping it in the warm. So we don't know. Maybe they're just not very robust fruits. Anyway, um, we've got our water bottles there. This is uh, the rest of the kitchen stuff. This is where we keep our cups and things, our cutlery, our knives and forks. This, this is a traditional coffee maker. So this will be part of our morning routine. These are the gas bottles here. We have three of them. I'm not sure how long they last yet, but we've got three of them. That's how many they supplied. And they connect up to this stove. This stove has two hobs, I think. Um, and of course, we've got all our pans and pots and cutlery and glasses and plates uh, in the box here. Toilet paper, good. Always a must have. That is something to point out. This van doesn't have a toilet at all. It is literally, it's this. That's your toilet. Your shovel. So you've got to dig a hole or find a public toilet somewhere. Um, this is a ladder. We don't necessarily need that, but that's just another way of getting up to the top. What else is there that's worth showing? Oh, shower. Of course, there's a shower. So underneath the crisps here, I'll move that out of the way. We have got a shower. So I don't think the water pump is on at the moment, but this is basically, there's 50 litre water tank under there. So this is us filling up with water. Uh, every petrol station in Costa Rica has free water. It's not drinking water, but it's perfect for showering. And in here we have a 50 litre tank. So happy days. Uh, it's not heated, it's not anything that which, but obviously you don't need that at this time of year in Costa Rica. Um, and it's just a great outdoor shower for us to rinse off and especially when we've covered in sand and Swash been bits. sweating. It's just a nice way of just rinsing off and just giving <laughs> yourself a nice outdoor shower. How's the shower? Pros and cons? Pros, it's really easy access. It's lovely and refreshing outside. Uh, perfect for rinsing sand off when you're at the beach. Cons, it's only got one temperature and it's outside, so you can't be private and you can't get naked and properly lava up, you know? Your bits. Your bits. Um, but yeah, it's lovely that it's outside, it's really refreshing, and this is something I think we would love to have the option to do in JITS for the summer. There is an awning rigged up to the side of the truck, which is perfect to take out in the heat of the day. It really makes your garden feel homely. Whilst we didn't get a chance to take this van off-road, we're sure it was very capable. The next van, however, we did get to test. This is a Toyota Prado, and we felt like this thing would drive us anywhere. This was less of a camper van, more of an off-roading 4x4 with a tent on top, and a load of camping gear in the back. Perfect for an adventure. This rooftop tent is exactly the same as the one on the other van. The only difference is this van can only fit one on top, whereas the other, if you wanted to, you could put two. So you can't sleep with many people here. And of course, there's not a place to sleep downstairs. So <laughs> this is your only option for sleeping, this one rooftop tent. Which we love. Which we love. What we love about this van is that it really is super simple. It demonstrates what's possible if you can get hold of a car, preferably a 4x4, install a rooftop tent, and bundle your camping gear in the back. It's not ideal to live in, but amazing for some adventure trips. As you will see, it can get messy very quickly. <laughs> Look at the state of this. There you go. Fan life reality. Yeah, there's no spaces for anything. It's just boxes in a car boot, whereas the other one had compartmentalized places and you could actually kind of be a bit more organized. Yeah, you can still be organized with this, but it's a little bit more challenging. It's time consuming. All the kit in the back of this van is exactly the same as the kit that's in the back of the other van. It's just laid out slightly differently. So Nomad America, they just give you a big list of all the things. You've got your gas cooker, your axe, all your things, not your axe, your machete. machete. Um, all your bits and pieces that you could need. 
The list of things include coffee making kit, gas stove, bowls and plates, washing up kit, pots and pans, lanterns, shovel, hammock and of course the machete. <laughs> One big difference between this van and the other one is the power setup. They don't have a way of charging other than when you're driving in this van, whereas the other van had a plug. That might not be an issue for everyone, but for us it is because we need to charge our drones and our batteries and all our bits and things because we're making all these films on the road because that's what we do. We make films on the road. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do to see all these films on the road that we're talking about. And make sure to give us a big thumbs up if you're enjoying this video. This van also definitely doesn't have a toilet, but it does have a shovel, which does the job if you're in the wilderness and tidy up sufficiently after yourself. You could say this became a morning routine. I just want to quickly interrupt this van tour to comment on how amazing this beach is and it's just been stunning. It's been our favorite park up. And this van is really good fun and it enables us to get to places like this because this is down a very bumpy off-roady track and I'd, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it in anything other than a decent 4x4. Um, so yeah, this beach, stunning. Cue montage of all the amazing things we've seen whilst camping at this beach. We spent two nights and three days on this beach. On the first night, we saw turtles hatching. The following day, we had the beach almost entirely to ourselves. The water was perfect and so was the sand. And to top it off, while having my shower, I was interrupted by a tree full of monkeys. It's not every day that my shower is interrupted by monkeys in the background. Without running water, improvisation is needed. Nomad America provides you with eco-friendly soap, which is ideal for washing up outside in nature. While the contents of the van are virtually identical, the shower systems are slightly different. Both showers are outside, at the back of the vans. The setup for this van is much more basic. So this is a very simple water shower. It doesn't even have a water pump. The water is stored in here, in this pipe, this tube that runs all along the front of the van and you've got an uh, air outlet here and the water outlet there so that means that the air can get out and the water can get in and you just open them both up and then you spray along and there you go, you're having a shower. Um, one thing to be aware of though is if the water isn't full and you're on a slight angle like we are now, all the water will run to the front there and you won't be able to get any water out of this and that's what's happened to us now. Um, and I guess that's the downside of it being so simple and it not having a pump. You can't pump the water up from there. Um, so it's good, it's simple, and when it works it's ideal, but it's not perfect. I preferred the one in the other van that had a little water pump and it had a much better water pressure. So now you've had to shower in the sea? So now we've been showering in the sea, yes. So there we have it guys, that is a rundown of these two vans. Um, it didn't take too long because they're both pretty basic, but they are great fun and really good ways to explore Costa Rica. Yeah, and we're really curious to find out from you guys, which one out of the two would you pick if you could? Yeah, if you could only have one of these two vans, which would you choose? Or Jits. Or Jits. <laughs> or we could have Jits here. If you could have Jits here, would you choose Jits? <laughs> that would be amazing uh, if she was 4x4. Four four. Yeah, I'm not quite sure that she would make it here, but imagine, that'd be so good. Um, yeah, so to see more of these vans in action, if you haven't already, go back and check out our last two films where we were traveling Costa Rica in these bad boys. Make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Join us next time when we'll be back in Jits exploring the incredible small country of Scotland. Comment Scotland if you made it this far.